All right, what's happening, y'all, man? There was a lot of good to take from that game, but overall, there was also a lot of bad, man. I mean, just plain and simple. I, I don't know what else to say. Then we just we're not clutch, and you could probably say we just straight up suck. I mean, is it time to start really evaluating this team for real? For real, is it time to move on from Carson Wentz so we can take a good look at Sam Howell? Because you don't want to get to the draft and then not take a top quarterback, whether it be Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, or whoever. I haven't really had a chance to really evaluate those guys to see how good I feel like they are, but I've heard a lot of hype behind them. So, like, I don't want to get to the draft and we have a chance to get one of those guys, but we don't because we're like, we haven't seen Sam Howell enough. We want to give him a chance. It's starting to get to the point where we should give him that chance this season. So if it's time to get a guy, just go get a guy. Um, but I do want to see Sam Howell just first of all, because I think Sam Howell could end up being a really good quarterback. But again, don't let Sam Howell, who you drafted in the fifth round, stop you from getting a top guy. But it's time to start evaluating. Is it time to bench Carson Wentz for Sam Howell? I don't really see a point in putting Taylor Heineke out there. I mean, granted, it may give us a spark and maybe we'll win some games, but he may not be good enough to take us to the playoffs with as bad as our offensive line, especially that left side has been. We're going to talk about that um so like and then we got to see is it time to move on from this coaching staff i highly doubt we fire ron rivera i doubt we're gonna fire scott turner or jack del rio i just with the way everything's set up and jack del rio um and, and dan snyder brought ron rivera in to basically be like a hate shield like all the hate that he's supposed to get goes to ron rivera so i highly doubt dan snyder is gonna pull the plug and, and fire ron rivera or anybody it's starting to look like we need to think about it but i highly doubt it happens and then uh i mean scott turner at the end right there, the play calling. Ron Rivera, the time management is a I blame Ron Rivera more than anybody else. I would say that last play right there, that last drive, that was last set of plays, where it's first and one on the goal line, should be able to get a touchdown there. I'm going to blame it, number one, on Ron Rivera's uh, time management, calling timeouts late. So now we don't have timeouts and we don't have time. And then Carson went second because he played terribly right there. Inaccurate throws, had chances to run in for a touchdown, didn't. Uh, and then had Terry McLaurin wide open on like first or second down, didn't see him. Then threw that crazy pass to J.D. McKissick. And then third, I would say, is Scott Turner's play calling. But again, I kind of understand Scott Turner's point of view a little bit. He didn't want to run the ball because we didn't have timeouts. If you run the ball and don't get it, a lot of clock goes away. And again, that goes back to why, why, why is Ron Rivera's fault more than anything else? Because this clock management put Scott Turner in that position, which also kind of put Carson Wentz in that position to where we ended up throwing the ball multiple times. But even so, Scott Turner's not off the hook. We should have ran the ball with Brian Robinson. What a what better story than Brian Robinson returning NFL debut after getting shot game winning touchdown at least give him the opportunity to man if i'm brian robinson i'm highly upset that i didn't even get a chance to show what i could do granted the run game was terrible today absolutely terrible but if i'm brian robinson i'm like man please put the ball in my hand and let me try yeah we had 43 yards rushing and it's crazy because we held the titans derrick henry and ryan Tannehill to 103 yards rushing on the day that's really good actually like, that's all you can really hope for from a defense. But we only ran the ball for 43 yards, and that's why we lost. We also lost because of third down conversions. Our defense was really outside of some explosive plays. And we already knew this coming into the game. The Tennessee Titans have the best red zone offense in the NFL. E easily, by far. They're like 90-something to 100% in the red zone. Everybody else is like 50% and lower. Like, they're the best red zone. So once they got into the red zone, I knew it was over with. They were scoring touchdowns. You don't really predict field goals for the Titans. They just don't do that. Um, but they went 4 or 14 on third downs. Our defense did pretty good at getting off the field on third downs. One of our biggest weaknesses last regular season and this preseason was third down defense. And we mightily improved in that category every game pretty much. But then our offense went 1 of 11 on third downs. And the only third down we picked up was that one um, shortly before, like right before we were in that one first and one on the goal line situation. So we were just terrible on offense, period. But... I know this was a long intro, but I was just so upset and I just had to go ahead and vent that out. But of course, with any Rico of Street Scores game review, we're going to go position group by position group. We're going to go with the quarterbacks. We're going to go to the running backs, offensive linemen, wide receivers, everybody, every player, everybody that contributed to the game. We're going to talk about them. I'm going to update y'all on injuries. We got to talk about William Jackson, the third getting benched, all of that. We're going to talk about Andrew Norwell selling the game away. 
Nick Martin with the low snaps. We're going to talk about every position group, defense as well, defensive line, linebackers, all of that. So y'all know how these go. But before we dive into all of that, even though we already dove into some of it, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, man, this game really hurt, man. This game really, really hurt because it was right there. We made the magical comeback. It was a home game. Like I said, the storyline was literally set up for Brian Robinson to win the game and we folded it. But yeah, man, without further ado, let's get it. All right, so starting with the quarterback, of course, Carson Wentz, not good. Not good. Plain and simple. My main thing with him is he makes easy throws look difficult and makes the difficult throws look easy. I just don't get it. Like, those, some of those passes to De'Ami Brown were, like, perfect accuracy. Some throws to Terry McLaurin, even one to John Bates on the sideline on that last drive was, like, perfect. Couldn't throw it any better than that. But then he makes the easy throws look difficult. The one to Cam Sims that they had to review. That should, he was wide open. That should have been an easy first down, but Carson Wentz threw it funny. Granted, there was pressure in his face, but he threw it weird. He was inaccurate, and that's why that play ended up having to get reviewed, and then it wasn't a catch. They ruled it not a catch, at least. Even though, like, if they would have caught catch on the field, they probably would have just left it. So the refs kind of hate it there by not calling it a catch on the field because it kind of looked like one. And then, you know, it was just one of those replays where you can't overturn it either way. But it is what it is. We ended up getting the first down either way. But Carson Wentz, man, that was not good at all. Now, granted, his stats looked like they were good. I mean, he had the interception at the end of the game, but he was 25 of 38, 359 yards, and two touchdowns. Again, up until that point where he just threw that interception that was his only interception of the game right there the game losing interception and he only got sacked three times for 17 yards and he was able to run quite a bit he scrambled for some yards today he scrambled for 15 yards total but some of those scrambles were really like clutch and avoided sacks and avoided negative plays and kept the drive moving so it was like he was on and off throughout the game. He had some great moments, some terrible moments. It was the true Carson Wentz experience. And then at the end, he throws an interception. And like I said in the intro, the really long intro that I had, is it time to start looking at Sam Howell? Again, I know some people want to see Taylor Heineke, but for me, you're throwing Taylor Heineke out there like a, we can still make the playoffs, let's get it type of thing. And of course, I still would love to make the playoffs, but I think it's more important to see what Sam Howell can do. Plus, Sam Howell has a higher ceiling than a Taylor Heineke. So if Sam Howell ever reaches his ceiling, he's better than Taylor Heineke anyway. And then I just feel like it would be better to go ahead and get him out there, get his lumps out the way early, and, and, and then let him learn. So hopefully towards the end of the season, he's balling out and he's our franchise quarterback. And you know that definitively going into the offseason. Rather than we're in the offseason, we're ready to move on from Carson Wentz, but we don't have any true answer at quarterback. We're like, is it Sam Howell? Are we going to start Taylor Heineke in 2023? Go ahead and give Sam Howell some game to start I don't know how soon I don't you know I don't know if we should do it this upcoming week against the Bears which is a short week Thursday night or if we should wait till the bye week to allow Sam Howell to uh to, to get a good look at Sam Howell or something like that I, I mean I really don't know the bye week is is kind of far away though like the bye week is 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 December 11th which kind of sucks because if you wait till the bye week Sam Howell will only have four games to start so if you plan on starting Sam Howell at any point this season if it's even a possibility do it way before the bye week a bye week is ideal because it will give them two weeks to prepare but maybe Houston Texans November 20th and that way he has seven games including a bye week in the middle to get ready he'll have the Texans and the Falcons those are literally like two of the easiest games technically we have left on the schedule even though with how poorly we've been playing no game is easy and I was saying that coming into the regular season even though I saw us making the playoffs and competing for winning this division before we just completely suck the way we do especially on offense right now I even said I mean granted the Falcons the Texans the Bears and the Lions look like easy opponents but that's the same thing those teams are saying about us and so man I'm just not surprised that we're at this point I'm not gonna lie but again if you want to start Sam Howell go ahead and start him against the Houston Texans that's kind of a short week because like we play the Eagles Monday night the, the the week before that and then we play the Texans on Sunday so that's technically like one day short of a regular week but still go ahead and let him play against the lesser good teams the Texans and Falcons and see what he can do from there and then hopefully by the time you get to the Giants game then by week Giants game and then a slew of difficult games I mean 
the Giants look like they're balling right now. So Giants by Giants, 49ers, Browns, and Cowboys is a difficult stretch. But, hey, I think it's a good chance to see what Sam Howell can do. And, again, Carson Wentz was really good at times, really bad at times. Probably wasn't bad enough to get him benched. But, again, if you're thinking about ever benching him at any point this season, it's better to do it sooner rather than later so you can get a chance to really evaluate Sam Howell. But, again, with the way Carson Wentz played today, kind of up until the point of that game losing the interception, I just doubt he gets benched. Now, if he gets benched, I'm not surprised. I'm not angry. I'm like, it's Sam Howell time. Let's get it. But just to warn y'all, I don't think Ron Rivera is going to bench him because, granted, that was a really bad game at moments, but also there were some really good moments in there. Ron Rivera's probably just going to ride the wave out on that. I'm not going to lie. Probably just going to go down with the ship type of thing. You know how Ron Rivera is. I'm still surprised he fired Sam Mills. Ron Rivera is loyal to a T. Loyal to a fault, basically. But now, let's go ahead and move on to the running backs. Um, Nothing was there. It's really hard to evaluate those guys. Because the offensive line wasn't giving them nothing. Now, granted, pass protection was better today, which is weird because Cornelius Lucas is a really good run blocker, but not a great pass protector. That's the thing he still needs to work on. But run blocking, he's got that down pack. And then Cornelius Lucas is kind of balanced. He's a little bit of both, but I like him in run blocking as well. But for some reason, we just couldn't run the ball today, but we actually passed pretty well. So that's a pretty big surprise to me. But of course, like the running backs, I mean, with the offensive line not blocking, they tried to do what they could. Brian Robinson was running hard even after recovering from a gunshot, but he's clearly still not 100% yet, but he was good enough to go out there and get us a couple of key first downs. Antonio Gibson loved him out in space. Get him the ball out in space in the passing game like a little dump off and let him work magic. Let him get 10 plus yards, chunk of plays. That's what he does best. Always do that. Keep that going. Keep that like in the playbook more often, Scott Turner. Please call that type of play way more often than you do. Antonio Gibson running the ball, I mean, not really much to note there because, again, the, the offensive line wasn't able to block well enough for them to get any run lanes, so it's hard to evaluate how well they ran. And also, Jonathan Williams got hurt. Um, just to let y'all know, he got hurt at some point and was out for the rest of the game. So I don't know how I don't know how bad the injury was, but we'll see as far as the future for that goes. And maybe Jared Patterson gets elevated from the practice squad because of that. And JD McKissick was pretty good in the passing game. Um, he was pretty straight there, made a couple of plays. Granted, he's just the victim of getting the ball thrown to him. Third and 19, little two-yard dump off, and now he's supposed to try to make eight yards out of it. So even though he was doing some good things, it just doesn't really look like it because his plays didn't feel like they mattered much. He had a couple of plays for first downs that mattered, especially towards the end, but he is definitely the victim of Scott Turner. It's second and 19. Let's throw a two-yard dump off to J.D. McKissick. And so even though he makes eight yards out of what it should have only probably been three yards, it just doesn't feel as impactful because you know, the drive ends up dying anyway. Um, and then moving on from the running backs, we can go to the tight ends. Logan Thomas was out today. So John Bates, from what I saw in the, in the, in the blocking game, he looked pretty good at times, but he also looked good as a receiver. He made two really good catches, two good throws through accurate throws from Carson Wentz. Cole Turner, uh, I mean, I don't know how you overthrow Cole Turner, but Carson Wentz found a way to at 6'5". Didn't have much of an impact. This was his rookie NFL debut, so it sucks that he didn't get to participate more. But it is what it is. Now, Monty Rogers, I didn't even notice him out there. I think he was out there, but I don't think he was ever thrown towards, so it is what it is there. And then wide receivers, De'Ami Brown is the man of the show. Now, Terry McLaurin balled out as well, and the defense clearly focused on stopping him, so that's why it was kind of hard for us to get him the ball, even though I don't care. We know as a defense with opposing teams who they want to get the ball to, CeeDee Lamb against the Cowboys, Anthony Brown and, and, and Devonta Smith against the Eagles, and Amon Ross St. Brown uh, for the Detroit Lions, and yet those guys still make plays because their offensive coordinator finds a way to get those guys the ball. Now, granted, Terry McLaurin did have a few catches, but it took way too long to get them started. I don't think Terry McLaurin even had a target until like second quarter, maybe even third quarter, which was annoying, but he ended up having five catches for 76 yards. That's not bad, but I still felt like he needs to be used even more than that, and then Curtis Samuel was getting used a lot in the first quarter, then he kind of disappeared until the fourth. I don't know what was up with that while we stopped targeting him there um but i mean i liked what i saw from curtis samuel when he had the ball in his hands other than that first drop the very beginning of the game 
first offensive drive for us he had that one drop that really hurt us because we ended up going three and out but other than that he looked pretty good terry mclaurin looked really good whenever he was finally targeted again other teams find a way to get their playmakers the ball even if you got to give them the ball in the backfield like the detroit lions did with amon ross st brown where they gave him basically a toss play like a little sweep and then he took it up for a bunch of yards it's just like if if other teams can do that why can't we but still terry mclaurin had five catches for 76 yards which isn't bad but that's also not enough he only had six targets and then deon Bobby Brown, the man of the hour. Yes, sir. Finally looking like the mo one of the more underrated draft picks of that draft class. I mean, it's only one game, so we can't necessarily take back the Diami Brown is a bust thing yet. I mean, I never said he was a bust. I didn't go that far, but it's only one game, so we can't, you know, give him too much credit yet. I got to see him be consistent. But he balled out today. We got to give him his credit. Two receptions, 105 yards, two touchdowns, all big plays. Longest being a 75-yarder. He got four targets, but, man, he made the most of those two big ones, man. Especially the second one was a one-handed catch. You could tell the first one still working out a little bit of nerves, a little bit of jitters. He kind of bobbled a little bit. Then the guy tackled his ankle. He almost fell a little bit. But that second catch was like, oh, yeah, I'm a five-year bet. One-handed catch, give me that. So it just shows that, like, in the preseason, maybe he was nervous. Maybe he wasn't trying hard enough. He didn't want to throw his body out there to get hit. He was definitely playing scared. Today, he wasn't playing scared. He actually went out there and gave it his all, and he balled out. I mean, that one-handed catch was enough I needed to see. After the first play, I was still like, that's a great play, but he still bobbled it, so I'm not sure how confident he is, but this game definitely gave him the confidence to go out there and be better. And that's huge. I mean, of course, you prefer to have Jahan Dotson out there. And with Jahan Dotson, we probably score on that last drive and win the game. Because that's literally, Jahan Dotson is our best touchdown receiver. It, it, before he got hurt and missed this game, him, him and Stephon Diggs were leading the NFL in touchdowns for each. Literally just them two. John Dotson is one of the best touchdown receivers already in the NFL. One of the best red zone receivers, all of that. He's always going to make a play. So we literally could have won that game if John Dotson was healthy. It sucks when you really think about it. But John Dotson not there. That gave De'Ami Brown more opportunities. Even gave Cam Sims more opportunities. He had two targets, one catch for seven yards. Um, it, you know, Cam Sims finally targeted before the month of November. That's crazy. The fact that he had two targets in October is amazing. It's sad, and it, it sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but it's really, like, crazy that Cam Sims was targeted before November. It just seems like he never is. But the fact that Jahan Dasa wasn't there, that gave plenty of opportunities for De'Ami Brown to go out there and gain confidence. That's the main thing I take away from this game for De'Ami Brown. Now that he knows that he can get open in the NFL and make good catches and score touchdowns, now he's going to have more confidence going into practice. Like, okay, I can do it. The NFL game isn't too fast for me. I can separate. I can catch. I can make plays. So when he goes into practice every week, when he goes in the film session every week, every day, every practice, he has more confidence now. And now that's going to make him a better player moving forward. So that's the main thing I take away from it. Of course, today's performance was great. But most importantly, long term, he's a more confident player leaving this game. And that's huge. Thank goodness for that. And then going to the the offensive line before we move on to the defense and this is where we were just completely terrible this is where the problems came from right here uh starting with the center nick martin guy we signed off the street just a couple of weeks ago low snaps false starts getting ran over bad but you weren't as bad as andrew norwell the left guard starting left guard getting abused holding penalty allow sack another drive holding penalty allow sack I mean, just come on. Like, Andrew Norwell was by far our worst offensive lineman today. Charles Leno was really good for the most part. He had, like, one false start. But even though that false start kind of bailed us out because Scott Turner got kind of cute. And then we ended up fumbling the ball. But Cornelius, uh, Charles Leno's false start uh, negated it. I think it was Charles Leno or Cornelius Lucas. Either one. Either way, Charles Leno played well today. Cornelius Lucas, for the most part, played well today. Played better than what we've seen from Sam Samuel Cosme. Now, he's not as good of a run blocker, but he's definitely a more consistent pass protector. In my opinion, again, Samuel Cosme is far better suited for the guard position. Remember, Brandon Sheriff was technically supposed to be a tackle coming out of the draft. Moved him to guard. He was an all-pro. I literally think Samuel Cosme can do the same thing. Arms are a little short. He has all of the athleticism, all of the power in the world. That's why he's one of the best run blocking tackles already in the NFL moving the guard that helps make pass protection easier he could continue to maul in the run game Samuel Cosme could be an all pro right guard literally but right now Cornelius Lucas in his place a better more consistent pass protector so no wonder Carson Wentz had a little bit more time today even though there was a lot of pressure in his face and he was dealing with a lot of pressure O-line was of course our worst position group of the day 
per usual so far this season but um but it, it got better Sadiq Charles in place of Trey Turner way better that was a huge upgrade I'm so happy to see Sadiq Charles balling out and playing well he wasn't perfect but he definitely was better than especially a hurt Trey Turner that's been terrible and then it was like we were focused on Trey Turner he's been terrible he's our worst offense alignment we replace him with Sadiq Charles now Andrew Norwell is our worst offense alignment it's like we plugged up one hole from leaking and then the other one opened up now we're trying to plug that one in and I think basically all of that to say it's time to bring in Eric Flowers now I know we disrespected him and if I'm Eric Flowers I'm not coming back unless y'all pay me quarterback money so I highly doubt it happens but I think it's an idea at least call him like take him out to dinner do fly him in by helicopter do what you got to do man court this guy something do something to get this guy to want to come back to the commanders because we need him at left guard we should have known even before this game that that, <laughs> that replacing brandon sheriff and eric flowers with edge you know well and trey turner was not gonna work out at least i mean even if it would have worked out it wouldn't have been as good we would have definitely have taken a step back but I didn't think, it, even me, I didn't think it would be this bad. It's terrible. So, man, Eric Flowers, please come back. Even as Rico of Street scores, if you could just do me a favor and please come back, man. We'll definitely take you. If we're not calling them, that's a shame. That's malpractice of the front office from Robin Baron and company. If, we're, if we don't at least have Eric Flowers on the on the phone, that, that's worthy of, of, of a lawsuit right there. Because this is ridiculous. Poor Carson Wentz. Even though Carson Wentz, again, like we already talked about earlier, is not playing well, this offensive line isn't helping at all and they've easily been our worst position group uh, right now if we had to say so far through the season our worst position groups offensive line number one quarterback number two and then i mean it's like a distant third maybe secondary after that like because those two have just been so bad that it, like even though the secondary hasn't necessarily been good or consistent they're nowhere near as bad as what the offensive line and the and quarterback has been so far this season it's just really bad so man eric flowers man we need you but i understand if i were eric flowers i wouldn't come back especially to a one in four situation a one in five what are we right now we're one in four right especially to a one in four situation that's in chaos and and, and dismay and all of this type of stuff i wouldn't want to come back to that either and especially again on top of that the way we disrespected them released them like that for carson Wentz is out here throwing game losing interceptions that's the reason we released them too to make room cap space wise for Carson Wentz even though we still have all of this cap space available even after we signed Carson Wentz so that whole situation is stupid and weird to me still we still have cap space available to go get some guys but yeah we got to replace Nick Martin with Tyler Larson Tyler Larson finally got activated to the 53 man roster I guess they wanted to give him another week just they, they just wanted to let him be a backup for now and not start to give him another week to get back a little bit more healthy because maybe he's not all the way back in football shape but Tyler Larson needs to be starting next week period Nick Martin not terrible but he should be a backup to Tyler Larson easily I've seen enough for sure those low snaps the the hands to the face that kind of wasn't really a hands to the face in my opinion but he got the flag for that um he got a false start earlier in the game how do you fall start as a center like it's just come on now so Again, Nick Martin was really bad, but he wasn't our worst offensive lineman. That was Andrew Norwell. Now, going to the defense, defensive line balled out. Montez Sweat was a monster today. Now, it was crazy because Ryan Tannehill, the way Montez Sweat was draped over him, he still made that first down throw, and I think that eventually led to seven points. That really sucked. Like, if Montez Sweat could have made that play, maybe we win the game. But other, but outside of that, Montez Sweat was really good outside of a, an encroachment that and then it was like a, a rough in the pass or like F.A. Abada or somebody that led to a first down for the Titans. I think they ended up scoring off of that drive as well. Um, but Montez Sweat outside of like a couple of plays was really good. He was either getting a sack or he was forcing a holding penalty. Like that man was balling out. Montez Sweat went stupid today. This was his coming out party. Hopefully if we get Chase Young soon. He'll have his and we'll have two really good edge rushers. F.A. Abada getting pressure i've been saying for like the past week the fl body should probably start over jameson williams i mean james smith williams my fault james smith williams um because he just has right now even with this game with montez sweat he is our best uh pressure rate like if we're talking about pressure per snaps on pass rush snaps and things like that fl bot is technically um our best edge rusher as far as getting to the quarterback 
Um, but then Jay Smith Williams stepped up and had a really good sack on a stunt today. So, you know, both of those guys are doing pretty well in place of Chase Young so far. I think this was the first good game that Jay Smith Williams had this season. I mean, maybe he kind of had a good game against the Jaguars, but the Lions, Eagles, and Cowboys games were not good for Jay Smith Williams. I'm glad he finally bounced back. Um, but the D line overall was really good. Jonathan Allen was dominant. Deron Payne was dominant at times. Overall, the defensive line played really well. I like the fact that John Ridgeway was even in there a couple of plays. We ran five defensive linemen. He was the nose tackle. That was supposed to be for Darian Mathis, but of course, he's out for season. But I liked what I saw a little bit from John Ridgeway today. Then going to the linebackers, because it's not really much to say about the defensive line. They played really well overall. It's not their fault that we lost. Linebacker-wise, Cole Holcomb, probably his best game of the season. Wasn't a great game. But he made a couple of plays in the run game, made a couple of plays in coverage. He had a couple of plays that he messed up a little bit. Wasn't a perfect game again, but it was definitely, to me, my be his best game this season for what I saw from him. He was definitely more active, more involved. I saw his name and heard his name called more often on stopping Derrick Henry and stuff like that. Jamin Davis, another great game. Two great games in a row. He had his best game of his career so far up to this point by far against the Cowboys last week. And he kind of continued that today. Today may not have been as good, but it was still really good. It was easily, at the very least, his second best game of his NFL career so far. Great against the run. Great in coverage. Derrick Henry just made that one really good catch at the one-yard line. And again, they eventually scored on that. But he made a really good catch. It was great coverage by Jamie Davis, but a great throw and a great catch by Derrick Henry. It's not fair that Derrick Henry can do all of that in the run game and then do something like that in the passing game. It's literally unfair. But that was just a professional play. That was a professional quarterback throwing to a professional veteran running back. It's nothing you can really do there as a linebacker. Even Fred Warner would probably get beat on that play right there. That was just a really good throw. Great offense always beat great defense in the NFL that's just the way the rules and the game is set up so I'm not mad at Jamin Davis for that play and honestly again he played really well outside of the screen game like he was bad against screens to uh, this game and literally the first touchdown the Titans got that was literally his fault he got blocked and then they ran the screen right past him so he wasn't good against screens but other than that he was really good against the run and against the pass great coverage today not mad at him outside of that of course John Bostic was in the game a little bit but he was the one that got beat bad on the Derrick Henry screen he got pancake so they benched him through Jamin Davis in and then that's when they threw another screen towards the linebackers and then Jamin Davis got beat and it was like well we might as well have kept John Bostic in there at this point but I still prefer to keep Jamin Davis in there for sure do not throw John Bostic out there for any reason Whatever Whatever John Bostic needs to do, Jamin Davis can just go out there and do it and do it better. Because uh, even the play he got beat, he didn't get completely pancaked like John Bostic from what I remember. Even though it was still a bad play, a negative play, at least it wasn't as bad as John Bostic's version of it. And it was literally back-to-back -back plays for you to co exactly compare it, directly compare it. Um, but yeah. Uh, really, that's it. I don't remember any other running back plan. I don't even think David David Mayo was questionable. I'm not even sure if he played today. So, moving on to the secondary. Benjamin St. Juice, good game, not great. Guys were getting separation on him at times, but Robert Woods, thank goodness, would drop an open pass on third down. It should have been a first down. Benjamin St. Juice didn't have good coverage there, but Benjamin St. Juice got lucky there. But Benjamin St. Juice played pretty well. Tariq uh, 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 Woolen, uh, Tariq. Richard Wild Goose played good. I think Tariq Castro Fields was out there at times because this takes me to one of the biggest points from the game. William Jackson III got benched. And I don't know if he ever came back or when he ever came back at some point. But I know like second and third quarter, that man was straight up benched. Like on the sideline, holding his helmet, not hurt at all. I don't know if we ended up putting him back in the game at some point in the fourth quarter. I was so focused on so many other things. I forgot William Jackson III was benched at a certain point. But... That's crazy. I don't know if William Jackson III will get his starting job back going against the Bears this upcoming week against th again Thursday night. But, um, man, we got to be better. Like, that, <laughs> that was terrible, bro. That was really 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 bad man we we just simply got to be better William Jackson the third that's unacceptable to where you're getting benched at this point especially for Tariq Castro Fields and Richard Wild Goose but that's why we brought them here and I feel like they played fairly well they weren't great but they also weren't terrible Kendall Fuller I don't even remember him really being out there I saw him make a couple of tackles but he wasn't really getting beat uh, today so I guess Kendall Fuller had a pretty good game with corners it's kind of hard to evaluate and really the secondary entirely like the whole secondary is really hard to evaluate those guys 
um outside of watching the all 22 watching them live is kind of hard unless they're getting beat and then it's obvious but plays that he's not getting thrown towards or you know just the fact that his name wasn't called a lot today i feel like it's safe to assume that he had a good day but i don't know for sure and then um christian holmes i mean he sold on one of those blocks i think it was like a dax mills only good return of the season type of thing he had a block in the back or holding or something like that so thanks for that christian holmes finding a way to sell us even though you're not even on the defense i mean i still have hope for him and i like christian holmes i think he's gonna eventually become a good corner but that did kind of hurt us and dax mill we're gonna talk about that when we get to the when we get to the the, uh, the special teams man because boy um, i can't believe i just remembered that but yeah uh going to the safeties camera curl played really well i mean he blew up a screen i mean offense alignment on him blowing up the offense alignment like he's a defensive end holding him back and then making the tackle man come on now camera curl doesn't get better than that good plays and coverage everything he balled out bob mccain like i said can't wait for percy butler to get right mentally because we need a guy that's physically faster and just a better athlete because the way he got beat for that deep bomb was embarrassing of course it eventually led to a touchdown we probably win that game without that terrible deep bomb that he allowed i mean just completely lost in coverage trying to follow the ball lost the ball and lost the receiver like come on now that's terrible bobby mccain outside of that play he was pretty decent but that play was so big and literally technically cost us the game it's just ridiculous and again percy butler please catch up mentally because we need your athleticism we could put Cameron curl's brain in the percy butler or Derek forrest's body either one of those two you literally have a top five safety in the nfl percy butler's literally just lacking the iq and the instincts he'll get that with time i mean remember Derek forrest last year looked like oh man he may end up being a waste of a draft pick but it was mostly because he was hurt but even when he wasn't hurt he just wasn't playing well hopefully percy butler has a similar rise this upcoming offseason for the 2023 season mentally because percy butler has all of the athletic tools all of that acceleration explosion speed and he has a little bit of instincts he can cover he can man-to-man -man cover but if he can gain some of that iq that bobby mccain has and can take over the free safety spot we'll be a way better defense because that play doesn't happen to percy butler period uh and then um that's really it for the secondary moving on to the second uh the, the special teams tressway kicked his tail off per usual not surprised joey sly i mean made the field goals and the pats we needed him to so shouts out to him and then dax Milne, we gotta talk we got so this is terrible bro this is really bad i know the commanders are trying to play it safe because at the very least he doesn't muff punts but he's providing us nothing in the return game he's not gonna flip field position i literally just call him automatic fair catch whether he fair catches it or not it's pretty much an automatic fair catch because we're not going to move the ball forward much anyway now granted the the punt return team and the kick return team blocking could be way better so it's not all his fault, but you can literally isolate him and see that you're just slow. I feel like I'm faster than him out there. His acceleration is terrible. He's not fast. It's just awful. And then he still makes dumb decisions to fair catch it when he shouldn't or let the ball bounce when he shouldn't. He should have fought fair caught it. Now the ball is bouncing further back into our territory. Things like that. Like, it's just he's not good. So we need to start having some tryouts for returners and try to find an explosive option. I still don't understand why we let DeAndre Carter know. I don't know why some people felt like, letting deandre carter go just made sense i would have paid him double with the charges of paying him i just don't get why we let him go because we had a good thing going there now we're stuck with dax mill can we please go bring some guys in i don't think alex erickson was the answer apparently Kyrick mcgowan and none of those guys matt cole were the answer let's bring in some more guys apparently we brought in four receivers to try out last week and i'm pretty sure most of them if not all of them were trying out for return duties none of them made the team none of them got signed so i guess they were bad go look for four more keep bringing in receivers every week running backs whoever corners anybody to compete for this return job because dax Milne is not it if we finish the season with dax Milne as our returner we're not doing our due diligence we haven't at least tried hard enough to go find some guys on the street anybody please bring somebody in here and um and yeah man that's the end of this video man that's the end of my evaluation if i missed anything please let me know feel like i talk about everything generally i wish i would have saw antonio gibson in the return game i don't think i ever saw him back there but i would have loved to have seen him i don't know why we didn't do it i know brian robinson's still a little hurt and so you don't want to throw antonio gibson back there on kickoffs until antonio gibson is fully healthy but man we got to get some type of spark on special teams because 
our, the field positioning, unless our defense gets it for us, is just not good. And I, man, I want to see Jahan Dotson when he gets back fully healthy, maybe back on some punts or stuff like that. Uh, Curtis Samuel, if we weren't worried about him getting hurt, I would like to see him because Dax Milne, again, is not the answer. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this game. And of course, leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. And as always, man, I appreciate all the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Name you see scrolling on the screen right now. And I'm just so sorry on behalf of the commanders for uh, for the fan base like what would happen today honestly like the way we lost is just one of them ones that really really hurt and so even though i'm hurt with y'all i just still want to apologize for what these commanders are doing man because i just feel like as a guy that that reports for them and, and and talks about them i feel like i have some blame in this somehow because this is just terrible but yeah man i'll catch y'all later i'm out man